Not a YouTuber, just like making videos. And um, this one I want to talk about American thug culture or that whole, you know what I mean? You know, I, I've never been a thug, you know. I'm a, so I don't know much about that lifestyle, but I'm just going to just, you know, talk about that word and, and so forth and what it means to. America, <laughs> but um, well, let's go into the origins of that word thug. That it um, interesting enough, it it originated in India, and it means the same as it does now. I'm like, I think they spelt it T H A G, and uh, I don't know how they pronounced it, but you know, it means a scoundrel or a dirty person or. You know, and then there was something that these people who rebelled against B British colonialism called themselves thugs or was considered thugs or thuggy or, you know, things of that nature. So, you know, it's very interesting. That is. Um, but I'm going to talk about, you know, uh, uh, that word and, you know, and how it's becoming so synonymous with the black youth. Or whatever. I'm like that. The, the word has been, you know, what I'm saying, it's oversaturated. You know, I know white people are uh, falsely accused. A lot of blacks are being thugs, and a lot of blacks are overusing that word as well. I want I want to talk about an incident here. Now, I don't know if those are who follow basketball, because I really don't. But there was an incident that happened some years ago with the uh, Indiana Pacers. The Indiana Pacers was at, it was at some sort of night, no, they was at a uh, strip club, some fine uh, <laughs> a gentleman establishment. And they got into a scuffle in a parking lot with, you know what I'm saying, with some other patrons. I'm like, well, one, of the, one of the members uh, of, the, of the team, you know, pulled out a pistol. And I think he just fired it up in the air and so forth. Um, you know what I'm saying? No, I, I don't think nobody was arrested, you know, or charged. You know, um, you know what I'm saying? Especially no no members of uh, of the, uh, the the Indiana Pacers, you know, uh, had charges uh, against them. But it was funny that you know people was talking about oh how how reckless these basketball players were when hence the story was. These dudes started it with them. I'm like, yeah, these are basketball players. You know what I'm saying? They're millionaires or close to it, or you know what I'm saying? Are dudes that are just at least sitting on six figures. There was three players. Two of them were starters. Um, so you know, but it, it's just that you know what I'm saying. Everybody in this in this uh, uh, squabble was black. You know what I mean? So yeah. And the thing is, in, in a local newspaper called the Nouveau. Some art, an artist, a cartoonist by the name of, of, of Gadfly, which I used to have respect for this guy, he did an illustration. You know what I'm saying? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw the picture he drew. You know what I mean? I'm just going to give you a rough idea of the, the picture that he drew. Now, if you see there, it's a basketball player with a ball and chain with the words thug life. Uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, to, you know what I'm saying? Embezzled inside that ball, which I, I I was completely appalled by this, you know, and I didn't even fuck with the newspaper ever since, because you know what I'm saying? It's saying that first of all, no, no, you know what I'm saying? A ball and chain means somebody somebody's in jail, somebody got a criminal record. None of the Pacers, just like I said, you know what I'm saying? Charges wasn't brought on any of the basketball players, and you know what I'm saying? From all accounts. They were defending themselves, you know what I'm saying? The dude who had a pistol was a, 
I think he was the licensed uh, uh, pistol owner and he had the pistol in his car because whatever, it, went, it leaked out into the parking lot and he went into his car and grabbed his piece or whatever. But I'm just saying, but since they're black, they're going to just say it, it, it's thugs, you know what I'm saying? What if white guys got into an altercation at a bar or whatever, you know, and guns were drawn, would they call them thugs? So, yeah, that, that's the thing. I'm like, black people are just, we're, we're, we're just walking on thin ice. And a lot of people don't know about this incident when I talk to people about it. Uh, you know what I'm saying, out, outside the state, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, it's kind of, when I think about it, it's, it's, it's pretty uh, furious. You know, how black, a black dude is just one incident away of being a thug. And also, I want to talk about in a, a, a YouTube channel. There's a YouTube channel. It's a very interesting one. It's called Thug Notes. And it's about this black dude. I guess he he's a straight up buck dancer. He's representing a stereotype. But he talks about bucks. The, the videos are very well known. Just uh, uh, look on, search on YouTube the, the channel called Thug Notes. And it has this black dude. It's like I said, he represents... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He represents a certain category. And then, you know, he talks about, you know, books like Huckleberry Finn, Catchers in the Rye, and so forth. So he kind of, he has that, that whole thug, that, that ghetto type slang, but he tries to be eloquent with it. Because he's, he's talking about books that, you know what I'm saying? And I guess the whole thing, black people don't read. And see, I don't know if his YouTube channel is, is this is, is this channel his own brainchild? Or is a white person created the channel called Thug Notes and used a black guy or whatever. Either which way it's kind of, you know. And the thing is, you know what I'm saying, a lot of people are entertained by this. You know, these, the, this sort of thug attitude mantra. Uh, don't drink your, 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 your gin and juice, you know what I mean, in the hood or whatever. How does that go? Uh, these rappers, we see them not on B just BET, but MTV, VH1, and so forth. So, hence, it's like America has accepted thug culture. They're entertained by it. We even see it in video games and so forth. But, hence, when we come across it in real life, you know, when we come across it in real life, it, it, it's very ugly and so forth. When, when, that, when it comes to your front door or whatever, then you want to back away from it. You know, know what I mean? You know, then you're disturbed by it. You know, and I think about that 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 uh that statement by Mark Cuban. You know, it says about uh, if a black dude was had a black kid had a hood and then he walks across the street, then it's a neo-Nazi. So he's comparing a black dude with a hood with a neo-Nazi. Hence, the same thing Stephen Molyneux did in his video, a libertarian. And there's been so many people that has, has, has uh, uh, already, you know what I'm saying, argued that statement and so forth like a like a Nazi. He's making a political statement. The thing is, Nazis, neo-Nazis, they represent Adolf Hitler. They represent a war or whatever. And then you're going to compare that to, to an article of clothing. And the thing is... I, I, I honestly think that, that, you know what I'm saying, they just, they talk about the hood. But, you know what I'm saying, if it was just a regular black kid, you think that these black dudes actually need the hood. They need that, you know what I'm saying, that, that extra something or whatever, that a white person wouldn't be per paranoid of them if they didn't have the hood, if they didn't just have a t-shirt or an oversized cap. Yeah, you know what I mean, just like that night with Trayvon Martin, you know what I mean. I think he would have got fouled if he wore, if he didn't wore a hood or not. It's just they're going to use that as an excuse, the hood, the hood, the hood, you know. And that's the thing. I'm like, we, we can't let ourselves be superimposed with that word thug. And, um, and, and you know, and let's face it, uh, Tupac, I'm like, he made that word a staple in hip hop. Even though there was some rap group called Thug Life or whatever or, or something like that, that he sort of grafted that name from. But he, I'm like, he put that name, I'm like, he, he made that part of the, the, <laughs> the vernacular of the youth and so forth, you know, thug. And I remember a phrase he said, he said, I'm not the biggest Tupac fan. I remember a phrase when he said that America looks at, looks. I'm paraphrasing here, America looks at the, the young black man, young black male as a thug, a criminal, a hoodlum, and he says, I'm going to be that thug, criminal, and hoodlum. So, you know, I don't, I, <laughs> I, I don't think that's a good idea, very smart, 
to portray a stereotype that white people give to you. I'm like, you just, you're pretty much just proving them right. But I also remember one, one time in a Source magazine, I want to see if other people remember it. There was a, um, a, a hair grease, a hair grease, hair product, whatever, that was aimed for uh, black men. You know what I'm saying? Particularly the hip hop crowd. And I remember Source did a story on it. It was in Source magazine and it was called Thug. You know, I, I literally tried to get on the internet and tried to find pictures of it or whatever, but it was a, literally a hair grease called Thug. And, it, and it's supposed to be marketed against the hip hop crowd, you know what I'm saying? So they can, you know, you know, a black guy want to braid their hair, have it looking nice, or put, you know what I'm saying, wave grease or whatever. That's what it was. It was just simply called you know, T H. UG. So I'm like, it's, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's crazy. And it's to the point where, you know what I'm saying? A young black dude has to prove that, you know what I'm saying, that he's not a thug. I'm like, you know, how does a thug dress? You yeah, know, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? Can't, can't a guy with tated rags or whatever be a thug or whatever? Can a guy in a suit be a thug? So, you know, it, it, it's funny. But I understand that how words uh, change meaning, you know what I'm saying, over time or, or, or gain new definitions. Now I'm going to go back into comparing, you know, thugs to neo-Nazis, which I can consider completely ludicrous. Because, um, you know, neo-Nazis, they represent war, they're, they're, they're like a spinoff from Adolf Hitler and the boys and so forth. And you know, what I'm and they're not just compared to thugs, but they're compared to, you know, what I'm saying dudes who just wear hoodies, because dudes who wear hoodies will be simply mistaken, you know what I mean, for thugs. Which I, I just, I don't know, man. This country is just moving completely backwards. Um, but you know, what I'm saying. But the thing is, with 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 skinheads or whatever, I'm like that originated from black people. Black people in England created the skinhead movement which was a rebellion against the government even the, the Ku Klux Klan or whatever or, or at least their hoods because I think it ultimately means brotherhoods came from black people in Spain even the swastika comes from they say it comes from hey, the, you know what I'm saying the African weaving wheel so yeah it's funny what type of gems you know what I'm saying you, you, you uh, uncover when you go digging but I, I think about how white people try to distance themselves, at least from the surface, from, you know what I'm saying, from this, this Nazi music and so forth. Even though uh, a neo-Nazi group such as, you know what I'm saying, uh, Red Eagle, Screwdriver, White Minority is, uh, is real big, is selling real big in the underground, they distance themselves. But, but blacks, you know what I'm saying, we, you know what I mean, we have to uh, embrace it's like, you know what I'm saying, this gangster thug musical whatever is embroiled in our own culture or whatever. It's like we can't get away from it, you know what I mean? It's being superimposed on us or whatever. And it seems like, as I said, the mainstream has no problem with it, you know. Mainstream media embraces these guys and so forth. And I'm like, okay, why don't, you know what I'm saying, white mainstream media embrace, you know what I'm saying, racial rhetoric. There's not that... But there's also dudes like uh, Johnny Rebel, and I don't even know if this guy is still alive. And there's other racist uh, uh, country folklore singers or whatever that they distance themselves from or whatever. Even though these guys are mega popular or whatever, they say, hey, on the surface, they'll be like, hey, these guys don't represent us. This is bad. And they keep it in the underground where everything that makes us look bad or whatever is like, yeah, no, it, we can't get away from it. You know what I'm saying? Even if we could. And uh, you know what I'm saying, and, and that, and, and I said right there, it, it it creates a hypocrisy on why how some people, white people, have, have uh, embraced it. You know what I'm saying? They listen to it in their cars or whatever, but when it shows up in their neighborhood, it shows up in its front, rears its ugly head at its front door. Then they have a problem. You see what I'm saying? Th that's all I want to say. Thanks for watching and Sally forth.